In this video, we're going to talk about net ionic equations with respect to double replacement reactions. So, When we have a double replacement reaction, typically what we're doing is we're mixing two solutions together, and then we're getting some product that's either a precipitate or a pure liquid or a gas being evolved. In this case, we're going to look at a precipitation reaction and describe what's initially present as reactants and what's present as products and how we can actually describe those more accurately through net ionic equations. So first let's take a look at what's inside the silver nitrate solution. When you're making a solution, you typically add a solid ionic compound to a solvent, and typically water in this case. Um, and what happens is your ionic lattice that's initially present gets broken down as water molecules dissolve the component ions of the ionic compound. You can see that the cations are surrounded by the partially negative oxygen end of water, and the anions are surrounded by the partially positive hydrogen end of water, and therefore we have an aqueous solution. Then we'll take a look at the sample we're going to mix this with. So the first sample we're going to mix this with is with the potassium chloride. So potassium chloride, much like the silver nitrate, is an ionic compound that's dissolved forming a solution. Again, the positive potassium ions are surrounded by the oxygen ends of water and the chloride anions are surrounded by the hydrogens of water. And what you really have is you don't have this compound reacting with this compound. You really end up with a mixture that includes all of the ions from each compound present. And that's what we actually have in the solution. So once the reaction occurs, some of the ions will combine to form a solid compound. So in this case, silver, which isn't super soluble, can actually form a precipitate with the chloride ion. So the silver and the chloride form the precipitate, and the potassium and the nitrate ions kind of just stay floating around in solution. They don't really participate in the reaction, and we call them spectator ions. So when we're describing this equation, okay, right here we have the complete ionic equation. It shows all the ions that were present in the solution, um, and it shows the product that forms as a solid. When we use the net ionic equation, we're really just looking at the species that were actually participants in the reaction. So when we're doing a net ionic equation, we leave the spectator ions out, which are indicated in blue there, and we only include the species that form the solid, or in the case where you're forming a pure liquid, the species that form a pure liquid, or what results in a gas. So net ionic equation only includes the things that actually change during the process.